It is the touchline here on Y254. Big day today that you are following up on many events that are happening around the country. The FKF, the, the FKF Cup, we have got also the Kenya Cup semi-finals. But right now, let's talk about the magical Kenya Open that will be coming our way next weekend. Joining us here to talk about the magical Kenya Open is the tournament director, Patrick Obad. Patrick, how are you doing? I'm very fine, thank you. Yes, Yeah. it's been a minute. I know it's been. It's yeah. been quite some time, but always we appear once a year. Our yeah. sport is just once a year yeah. in terms of the international sports. Eh? Yeah. But um, golf is played through the whole year. Mm. That's the one thing. It's not a one-off event, yes. but we have this one big event mm. that the country looks forward to, and that's the Magical Kenya Open. Is yeah. it still too elitic? You know, people outside there are passionate about golf. They get scared of, you know, trying even for the layman on the street because they consider <laughs> it. Too elitic. Too elitic. Yeah. Golf is not an elite sport. I think in the past it may have been, but when you look um, at the professionals from Kenya who are going to play this year, yes. all of them started off at the bottom. Yes. Right? There were people who were, who were carrying bags for players and so forth, so they had a job in the golf course. Mm -hmm. Right? But they have been able to be trained at those golf clubs Right? Until now, they're able to play at a level where they're playing in international events. And they, you know, they, they are also playing, they were able to play in the golf clubs. Right? So, um, so at least there is evidence that you do not need to be somebody who's driving a Mercedes-Benz to succeed in golf. Right? So that's in a fact, stereotype. In fact, it's a stereotype. Most of the guys who, who are members of those clubs, they don't go up into the kind of levels that you're seeing playing in, the, in this international event we have. Yes. Right? Most of the people who are coming there are from the bottom. Those are people who are actually playing in the Ken magical Kenya Open, quote, quote, representing Kenya. Yeah? So I think they, this whole stereotype about um, golf being an expensive sport um, is not really there. And, uh, you know, we could go into the mathematics of it, that even somebody, I started golf when I started working. Yeah? And I had to put some money together and, 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 and start. Yeah. And um, it took me about two years to get everything I needed. And then I started. Yeah? And even right now, when you look at when you um, if you look at the golf clubs, every single golf club has got an outreach program into the primary schools around it. We are starting from scratch, from down there, because people like me who started playing golf much when you're much older, you know your joints are already getting a bit stiff and what have you. And that swing yeah, the swing cannot be correctly. yeah that done correctly. Yeah. So you've got to you've got to start at a point whereby you know you've got to, you're, you've got children who are still very flexible. Yes. So every club. Um, in the country, no, I, let me not say every club, but I think something like about out of the 46 golf clubs we have, about 32 have got programs that they have a catchment around them. So the primary schools, um, children who are keen to start sports, they take them in and they are training them free of charge. Because that's where we see the future coming. Yes, but we're Let's talk about the event that is coming now next week because that is the big event. When it was here last year, everybody could not believe that Kenya could bring such an event, such a magnitude event to Kenya. Now it is coming back again. How are the preparations going? Preparations are going on well, very well. Um, right now the course is closed and we are doing the final touches because um, we have to, um, you know, you people think grass is grass. But uh, this grass that these guys play on has got to be looked after. And it's looked after the whole year. It's not just something that happens, you know, the week before. Yes. So over the last six months, eight months, we have had a specialist coming in. And they come in regularly. They look at the grass. They look at the turf that there is. They advise the club on what to do. And then they continue doing it. So that by the time it reaches March or whichever, March or April, whenever the event is, yes. the course is in very good condition. And right now, despite the fact that we've got um, we've got a bit of drought in the country, yes. yeah, there is a reservoir that the club, the Mudega Golf Club, has got, and they are able to sort of you know ration that water yeah. to make sure that the course is in good condition. So the course is in good condition. Um, the players start to arrive tomorrow. They were playing in India last week, um, so this week they're not playing anywhere. They normally otherwise they'd have been arriving on Tuesday, but from tomorrow players are beginning to arrive. Um, into, into the country, all the accommodation. We've got special rates for them at, uh, at one of the local hotels. So we've got a discount, I think, of about 25-30% for them to come and play in that place, to stay in that place. Um, the officials, who are the special officials from the European uh, tour group, they arrived uh, yesterday 
and they're out now setting out the course, making sure that the markings are good and so forth. So we're in a good place in terms of the players. Wow. Yeah. Out of all our sporting activities locally, golf attracts phenomenal interest, especially from the government. There is sort of goodwill. I don't know how is you know government relating with you this time around now that we got a new CS at the helm of the ministry. Yeah. Um golf um in terms of the funding from the government, they normally commit in the budget the year before. Yes. So we talked to the previous government around about March and put the budget in. So it was in the budget for this year. So um so the budget was already in. We were we've spoken, we've spoken to the ministry, we spoke to them. Um, we, we also had a situation where we exposed the, the current um, uh, cabinet secretary um, to a large golf tournament so he could appreciate what it's all about because even with the last government we did the same thing in 20, 2017, um, we took them to a big tournament so they could see what it's like. Yes. Um, so I think the government, we're relating with them very well. Um, we have formed what is called a local organizing committee for the first time which is the way that the current, um, the current government would like to work with us. Yes. So they've, we've formed a local organizing committee that is actually helping to deliver the event with a lot of government presence in that committee. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing uh, you have been optimistic about is uh, the Kenyan players, our local players uh, to come up and uh, play in this event. And uh, we usually get international swimming, but you have done, I think, a successful safari tour very successful safari tour and some of these players will be coming from the safari tour which players can we expect uh, to carry our flag very well you know all of them the eight that are playing who are the professionals and the six amateurs you remember last year yeah it was Mutai Kibu who actually made the cut and he was an amateur right yes so he doesn't win money he wins um a salva right and all our players who are in the who are the professionals who would have won money yeah. hardly made it through. I think only one other made it through. Yeah? Yes. So whilst they are well prepared, we've prepared them in the safari tour, they've been playing and everything else. On the day, it depends on how consistent your form is in golf. Yes. And it could be that on this particular week coming, Kitukidogo to Imeribu. Yeah? And when that happens, yeah. you you although you've been playing very well. You just fade to the bottom. Yes. Yeah. We had last year, I think you remember, Nani Robson Chinoy. He was a winner of the safari tour. Yeah. yeah. The, the guy from Zimbabwe. And he, d he didn't make the cut. Yeah. So it's difficult to, to predict. But what we hope is that the eight Kenyans, yeah. the professionals, and the six amateurs who are playing have had sufficient preparation and have continued to prepare after the safari tour. Because right now, it's not about um, anything. It is in the mind. The yeah. mental game. That's what they've got to prepare with. And then, in terms of the other preparation, a lot of golfers prepare time spent um, getting their body fit. fit. So you're talking about dieting. You're talking about, um, you know, you're talking about just general gymming and whatever it is and doing the right exercise. Yes. And just doing a little bit of practice. Because if they start practicing fully the game, yeah. then they'll probably find that they've, they've overstretched themselves. So, from my point of view, we've given them the opportunity to practice using the safari tour. Now it is over to them. Namunguao. Yes. <laughs> uh, previously, you know, those golfers from overseas yeah. have dominated the headlines. This time around, how is the foreign attraction looking like? Um, you know what has happened is that in the, um, over the last three years, uh, post-COVID, um, we have this event called the Live Golf, which mm -hmm. has come in. Yes. And Live Golf has threatened the traditional golf uh -huh. that uh, that we've had. The, the professional yeah, the, golf the, the, the PGAs and whatever PGA, it is yeah. and so forth. Yeah. So what Live Golf did, they they ramped up prize money seriously. Yes. So in response, the PGAs, both the European Tour and the PGA Tour in the, in the US, have actually also ramped up their money. Yeah. So the, 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 the Magical Kenya Open used to be about $1.3 um, million U, uh, dollars. In right. terms of total prize money, yes. this year it is two million dollars, uh -huh. because the European Tour has said that the minimum prize money is two million. So it's bum been bumped up to two million. Mm, yes. Right. So the kind of players who are coming now are probably a better, better caliber, a better caliber than the ones who were coming before yes. when we were at one point three million. But now it means that the competition amongst the international players to play in these competitions is much higher. Yes. So they've got to improve their ranking. 
in the in the in the in the ranking that they have for the international players and to be able to come into Kenya. So it's it's going to you know we've got good players coming. Yeah. So our guys are going to have a bit of a tough time this time. So generally it will be a hotly contested battle. It's got to be hotly contested. Well, we have um, you know we've got some players whom we haven't seen in Kenya um, yes. for the last eight ten years, and they're right at the top. Yeah. Yeah. You brought in the live and it was a big. Uh, the traditional golf did not like what uh, live came up with. For you, what was your take on that? I mean, live live was going. It was going to happen. Right? No matter what. It no matter what, it doesn't matter. It was just a question of time yeah. that live was going to happen. And it's happened. Yeah. And you've seen what it's done. Um, in, the, in the tour in, um, in, um, in, in the US, yes. yeah, they've now got what they call eight elite events uh-huh. where there's guaranteed money yeah. and the field is small. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's no cut. Yes. So that is the response to the live, live golf. Because yeah. the live golf, you have a simple you know, an event, yeah. no cut, everybody earns money. Yeah. So they've actually responded. And it's going to be good for golf generally across the world. Uh, what will be our value? Because for us, we have uh, talked about the prize money and everything that is now coming on, let's say, to Africa mm. and everything that is going to happen. But what will it be significantly for the larger Africa now for LIVE? LIVE, I don't think, is going to come to Africa yet. Yes. Yeah? Because they have got their sponsorship and they come with everything. Yes. Yeah? So they've picked where they're going to go. And I think Africa is not yet a significant market for them um, and for their sponsors. So I don't think we're going to see live golf um, in Africa unless we can put a lot of money aside. Yes. Right. So um, I don't think Africa is going to see live golf for at least another two to three years. Wow. Yeah. But it's a big one and it can actually bring, it has brought a lot of conversations when we talk about that one. But Magical Kenya Open happening next week here in Nairobi at the Mudaiga Golf Club. We're hanging out with the, the tournament director, Mr. Patrick O'Bath, and he's giving us some insights about what is happening, what is going to happen at the tournament next week at the Mudaiga Golf Club. How many players? Majorly, are we going to see at the event? Um, normally, golf events have 156. Yes. So the 156 consists of, I said, six amateurs yes. who are all from Kenya. We have um, eight professionals who are all from Kenya. Yeah. We have two other professionals who qualified from the Safari Tour, and they are from, um, from Uganda and from Zimbabwe. Right? So those are the ones that we have put in as, as, as Magical Kenya Open. And the balance of 156 come from US, UK, a lot of countries in Europe, almost all of them are represented. Um, we have some players from India, uh, Thailand, China, Korea, and Japan. Those are the countries that are all presented um, in this event. For the local entrance, Kibuki did exceptionally well last year, and I think we saw some motivation that came from the previous government. Do you think that will be key to the performance of you know, uh, our representatives locally who are seeking to take part? I think that was a spontaneous reaction, because we haven't had a Kenyan performing and at that kind of level. And it was made an appearance, right? Huh? It was his made an appearance. It was made an appearance. Yeah. And we had that kind of outcome. So it was a very spontaneous reaction that happened just because all of a sudden, we had a, a young man who is not even a professional making it to that level. Defying all odds. Yeah, defying all odds. Yes. And when he went into that kind of situation, the, I think uh, um, His Excellency at that time really got excited and said, we are going to do everything we can to make sure that this guy gets a scholarship. If he turns professional, we'll make sure he, he's got that and we give him a kit. So all that has happened. Yeah, and hopefully um, with uh, our CS Ababu Namwamba and His Excellency, hopefully if another Kenyan and amateur replicate like the that. same. I hope they'll replicate the they same. They will follow but suit. I hope, I hope they'll follow suit. <laughs> uh, there's a uh, conversation usually go happen. People saying that you know Kenya is a footballing nation. Kenya is an athletics nation. But for me, I don't believe so. I believe Kenya is a golfing nation because I attended with my my father is a Kisi Golf Club. Let's go with my dad there. I've gone to Tana Hill. I've gone to Nyanyuki and everything. And the history of golf in Kenya tells you it's even better than football. It's even better than uh, rugby that people talk about. Dates back, I think, to the early 1900s. And a few conquer. I when I say that, that we that are is, a golfing nation. Actually, in terms of the facilities, for, I mean, football you can play anyway. You don't need a course. Yes. Yeah, that is the one thing. 
um, and rugby you can play on a football on a football field. Yes. Yes. So the, I think the reason why they are seen they're more popular is that they're easy to play. Yes. Right. Um, but when you take the events that require a special space, look at things like squash. Yes. Look at tennis. Yeah. Look at uh, badminton. Yeah. All those things they need special equipment. Yeah. yeah? Rugby and football you just create a space and yeah. you know in, in you, you can know, improvise yeah you can improvise yeah. but these ones you actually need to have special equipment and you need to play on golf i think has more it's got a large number of courses in the country 40 of them now yes and uh, approximately i think uh, currently about 11000 people who play golf in the country and increasing yes. especially with the junior programs that are taking place now so when you look at, at, at the history of golf from, the, I think, about 1905 or thereabouts, yes. yeah, every town where the, the, you know, the colonials um, went to, yes. they had a sports club and they had a golf club. Those were the two things they put as part of the recreation. Yes. And um, when we got independence, those golf clubs then were taken over by, by the elite Africans at the time who mm. took over. Unfortunately, we lost about eight golf clubs because a lot of the people outside of Nairobi and outside the major towns did not think it was worth having, you know, 150, 200 acres that a few guys walk on. Yes. Yeah, so they were, they were grabbed and subdivided and they disappeared. So now there's a few more beginning to come up, yeah? And um, the ones that are surviving now, you found that a lot of now, um, you know, the cost of joining them used to be prohibitive to some people. Yes. But now... It's become a lot more affordable. There are some of them that are affordable, others are probably a little, a little bit higher, and others are difficult to afford. So that mix of golf clubs is there. So golf has got, um, is getting a good following now. There's a lot of young people joining golf clubs. Yes. Um, there was a time, uh, between about 2000 and, and 2015, the, the increase in membership in golf clubs was very, very low. Yes. Yeah, it was seen as for old men, for whatever it is. But I think people have now seen that younger people are playing are, are better at playing that so there's a lot of young people joining golf clubs now to play golf yeah. yeah so what's the strategy like to make the sport readily available to everyone who's seeking to take part even at the machinani where there is probably overwhelming interest but due to you know facilities you know yeah. facilities has been undoing it cuts across several sporting disciplines locally but is there an arrangement probably to work with the government to ensure that you we put up facilities across the country <coughs> I think the big thing um, for the government to lead on is to actually put the golf club that was supposed to be at Kasarani. Oh. There is space. If you look at the master plan of Kasarani, yes. there is space that was allocated for golf. And we have been, you know... Because for, Kasarani itself is too vast. It can it's, a, it's a huge place. It yeah. was actually in the master plan. It's there. And there's even drawings that show the layout of the Kasarani golf course. I have them at home. And... What needs to happen is we need to create that as a public course yes. and show how you can manage a public course within normal circumstances. Yes. And if you look at internationally, what people do, they do, a, they, you know, a county government would put up a course and then people pay as they play. So, and you have a, you have a, a, a clubhouse, yes. but the clubhouse is open to anybody. It's just like going into a, into a hotel or whatever it is, and you, you go to the clubhouse, but you pay for everything that you use. Yeah. If you want to use a changing room, you pay for it, whatever it is. Yeah. But if, come, if you're staying nearby, you don't have to go to the clubhouse. You can go home. So what needs to happen in order to, to sort of allow the talent that we see when um, we're getting these kids into the golf clubs is to start putting up public golf courses. That's the only way we are going to tap on that talent. And a public golf course doesn't have to be big, it only needs to be nine holes. Nine holes is enough, and that's about, nine holes is probably something like about 110 acres that you require. And then putting it up is not that expensive, and then you have people coming to pay and play, and let the county government look after that. If we do that, then you will, see, I think you'll have a much bigger base of golfers, and in, uh, if, you, if you increase the base, then you're more likely to find somebody coming up yes. who will become a world beater. At the moment, I think the base is too small. I have a friend of mine who keeps telling me that, you know, the role of government is not to support or fund sporting initiatives, but put in place a conducive environment that will probably attract uh, private investment. Yeah. Can there be such an arrangement? 
golf for people to for people to put up golf clubs the main thing is where they can get a return on people playing now if there are sufficient golf clubs in the country and people and and you begin to attract people to play the game then there is enough return that you can make on a golf course yeah but it means that you you will be charging per round but you need to then begin to have programs that attract people so within this thing tembea kenya yes. you know to go around kenya yes. you could actually create a circuit right mm -hmm. that somebody pays yeah yes. and you have a bus that takes you around and you can play golf but you need to start somewhere to play golf yeah and that's where the public courses are important so it's not too late for for us. <coughs> no it isn't yeah if we get the public courses and people can start and then after that they can graduate and move on and now begin to play around the around the country uh, when we did the, the first uh, magical kenya open you talked about uh, some of the gaps that are there in country in the country but uh, that's uh, when you, you came with the initiative of the safari tour to come around to come and address some of uh, th those gaps. And I think the safari just started with eight legs and now did it, we get to 16? No, no, we are still at, we are at 10 now. 10, yeah. 10. How is it uh, significantly, how has it impacted now the magical Kenya Open and did it address uh, some of those gaps? The safari tour addressed one, no, about two things which you set out to address. One, our uh, professional golfers and the guys who had aspired to be professional golfers did not have a place they could play for money. So they were not, they were not actually playing competitively. competitively. They were playing with amateurs and hopefully getting money from, you know, from having wages with them and so forth. Yes. And then some of them were employed to teach. Yeah? Yes. So that was the only place they could earn money. So the safari tour at least allowed them to play and earn money if they performed. Yeah, so that was the first thing, was to allow them to, 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 to sort of to earn money if they could perform. Yes. The second one was to give them an opportunity for competing against each other to improve the level yes. at which they're playing. I think we've achieved both objectives. Yeah, when we started off, we had only local players and one Ugandan who used to come. Yes. Yeah, um, Kasozi, Philip Kasozi. But as it grew... Now you're finding we're getting four players from Zimbabwe, two from, Zimb from Zambia, I think there's three from Malawi, yeah. the Tanzanians are now about three or four who come regularly, yeah. the Ugandans are probably six coming in, um, the, the Rwand Rwandese have also started coming. Um, last year we had Nigerians, but this year we didn't have the Nigerians because they've also started something there. Mm -hmm. So what you have seen is that the safari tour has grown. Mm -hmm. And the prize money has also grown. We started with about half a million. Yes. When we started off those many years back. Now, um, the top prize money is $3 million in terms of the, of the prize pass. Mm -hmm. yeah? So that is incentive for the players to come and play. Yeah. And that was the whole objective of the, of, of the Kenya, of the Safari Tour. Yeah. However, we need to do a couple more things. Mm -hmm. The first one is we need to consistently grow so we get to about 15 to 18 events a year. Mm -hmm. yes. right? And we need sponsorship for that. COVID hit the country mm -hmm. and it took us down the other way because we, we, sponsors are not forthcoming. Yes. But right now there is a lot of willingness from sponsors to actually move forward. Yeah. Yeah? And we are talking in them for next year. So that's the first thing that needs to happen in Safari Tour. We need to increase it out. Yes. We need to have sponsors. We need to spread it out so that we play in Kenya. Uh, Uganda, they play one, which is the Uganda Open. We need to get three events there. And then Tanzania, because of the number of courses they have, probably two events. But, or maybe um, most of them probably played in Arusha uh -huh. because the best course in Tanzania, 18-hole course, is in Arusha. Yes. Um, Rwanda have upgraded their, 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 their national course. Fortunately, they've got 18 holes now. It used to be nine. Yes. Yeah? So with all that in place, 18 events, prize money minimum, 3 million shillings, prize pass. Not, yes. Yeah, the pass they're competing for, probably a little bit more. If we do that, I can tell you that the competition that will happen in the safari tour, yes. you'll have South Africans coming and you have those guys coming regularly because of that money. Yes. And you will see the quality of play that you've already seen improving, improve even more. Wow. Yeah. And uh, now going forward, what is the expectation like at the upcoming event? Um, this event, uh, the Kenya Open this year, Magical Kenya Open, um, 
first of all, it is, I think we've got a, um, people now appreciate what the Magical Kenya Open is, yeah. right? And, and they, 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 they know what is happening. The second thing is that we are continuing our journey, not only of developing the, um, the, the, the players, but also developing the spectators. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another aspect we have to look at. We have yes. to develop the spectators. And, um, so that they understand the They understand the, the game, they understand the rules, they understand yeah. everything else. Yes. And what we've done, we borrowed, a, we, borrowed, we borrowed a leaf from rugby by putting in what we call a village. Yes. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. That was because rugby, when people started going to rugby, they never came to watch rugby. Yeah. yeah. They used to go for the party. Most yeah. of them, even if you ask them about the results of the fixtures, they, they wouldn't don't remember. Know, but yeah. they wanted to have a big party. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So we believe that um, if you're going to grow golf in the country, we need to do the same thing. We need to get, we need to attract people for, to, be, to come to the golf course. Yes. Um, and the way we attract them is to put up a village mm -hmm. in, the, in the place. And you have a village, which we, I, I think the first village we did was in uh, Karen. Karen. Yeah. And we had two there. And then we came, to, we came over to, um, to, to Mudaiga. We had one last year and we have one this year. And that is now becoming a, uh, you know, a, a permanent feature in the golf, in, in, in the, in the golf tournaments, that we are, at least for the, in the Magical Kenya Open, that you have the village. And um, what we are trying to do now is to have some activation during the day yes. that will bring people during the day mm -hmm. to come into the golf course, yes. um, win some tickets and do whatever it is. I think that's already ongoing. Um, so they can come to the golf course and watch during the day as guests of wherever it is that has activated them. Yeah? yeah? And if they can do that one, at least they will begin to understand what golf is. And slowly over time, if we get a thousand spectators, two thousand spectators, maybe we'll get 10, 15 people starting golf. Yeah? Yes. And if every day we do that, if every year, every year we get about 100, 200 people starting golf, that would be good in this country. Because those people, the 100 that start this year, will influence people during the course of the year and bring them in. Yes. So the multiplier effect is that if you have 100 people who start golf because of watching the Kenya Open, they will actually start another 100, 200 people coming in because they want buddies to play with them. Yeah? And that, as we build that spectator base so that now those people are going to come to watch golf rather than go to the village. Right? So hopefully within a few years, we are going to get a big golfing fraternity in the country. So combined with what we talked about earlier about, um, about you know, building the municipal courses and yes. getting people to start there, and then the Kenya Open also attracting people. That way, I think we will, this, 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 um, this um, bottom of the pyramid approach, getting people to start at that level yes. and building that to be quite large is the future for golf in this country. I think that is a brilliant initiative you're running on enlightenment and attracting spectators and even trying to, you know, train them on what the game entails. But yeah. this one I got to ask for majority of people outside there. Mm -hmm. At the village will be things manageable, especially, you know, the frothy liquids. On a light note. <laughs> 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 yes, um, that frothy liquid will be there. Um, people can consume to their capacity, um, but we'll have it only open from, uh, the village is open the whole evening. But we close off at about, we stop selling drinks at, at midnight and people can continue listening to music until about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And after that, we tell everyone to go home. Yeah? And uh, we would like to um, advise people. Um, it is much easier to get an Uber or a Bolt or whatever it is yes. to come to that place. First of all, there's, you, know, you, you park at, at Madare Hospital yeah. and then we have a shuttle that will take players from there into the, into the course, yeah? So that shuttle is going to be going round and round and round. And, 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 but if you come and you've taken the frothy liquid, um, we, don't, we, we value you. True. We want you to come back the following day. Yeah. And if, you take, yeah, if you take uh, the frothy liquid and you are then unable to drive home or you drive home and we lose you, um, that would be sad for us. So we are actually encouraging people to take the raid, uh, the ride hailing uh, whatever it is they uh, use the ride hailing apps yes. um, to get their, their, their taxis to come to come in yeah. and then when they finish right they can stagger to the gate if, that, if they go to that stage and get their ride again and go home and we hope to see them the following day your final word for magical kenya open and what we can expect on saturday next week um the game starts on thursday 
that's what I'm expecting people to come on. Yes. So my final word is everybody should make it to the event. We have a lot of fun, right? Yes. You come in the evenings, there will be enough for you to do. We also have a kid zone where kids can come and jump about and do whatever it is if you're there. Yes. So they won't be bored, yeah? But, um, and, and just come and enjoy golf. There's plenty to see. We have also got exhibitions. We've got um, vendors who are vending stuff. Um, there's plenty of food and drink. We've made sure that that is available. So just come, walk. It's good for your health. Enjoy the drink, enjoy the food, and watch golf. And you've been a mainstay in the world of rugby locally, at some point chairman of Kenya Golf Union. And what has been the secret behind your longevity? And you're still looking <laughs> like us, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I decided that my, my, my big thing was to organize golf rather than play golf. I mean, I play golf on an, you know, just as a, as a, as a, as a hobby. Um, and I think it's innovation. You have to continually innovate in the game. Yeah. So we started off with a challenge tour and we built up, we began to get more prize money. We made it look different and we grew it. And you know, and we started off when I started off as a tournament director, the prize money was about three hundred thousand euros. Yeah. We built it up to half a million euros. And at that point we realized if you're going to grow, we have to change the way we operate. So that's why we made a we made the business case, approached government and the private sector. And we were able to increase the prize money from 500,000 euros to 1.1 million. From one year to the next. Yes. So now at that level, we've now got to innovate. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, trying to get people to come to the village yeah. and do other things, promotions and so forth. So, I mean, this whole innovation is what keeps me going. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It keeps you going. Yeah, it keeps me going. keeps me feeling good. keeps me active. Well, yeah. I forgot to ask you one thing, and there's got to be also the lack of local coaches. And uh, that's another area of development that uh, <laughs> remember we talked about earlier. How yeah. are we doing now? And uh, planning on, because now for you, you can be a, a coach. I think uh, the experience you have, but I think it's for the young kids. Now the professional coaches who can come in, how are we doing in that part? Um, it's not my area to speak about because me, I just focus on the Kenya Open. Yes. But there is, um, there is a big golf strategy that is being developed. I think they call it a one golf strategy for Kenya. Uh -huh. And that will look at everything. Yes. It will look at um, how do you grow golf from the grassroots to the pinnacle. Yes. And part of that will not just be, you need coaches. So we need to develop what are called, um, you know, you have playing, playing professionals and you have coaching professionals. We have to make the difference between those two and then make sure that the coaching professionals, the teachers, yes. are appropriately certified to teach. Yes. Because teaching golf is in itself a profession. Mm -hmm. And playing is a profession, and the two of them should really be separated. So within that one golf strategy, they're, they're working on how to make that happen and also get certification for them. They're also talking about, when you're talking about golf, you need golf uh, nutritionists, you need golf, um, golf, um, uh, golf trainers to train you physically. Yeah, on, on your on your on, on your fitness, you also need um, Physio. you need physios, you need psychologists to actually make your mind to, and, to, and to prepare your mind. So all those things in the golf strategy need to be in place for us to have you know this pipeline, talent pipeline yeah. that is being properly managed. And then finally, the other person that you need is actually a professional manager for the players. So once you become uh, once once you become a good golfer, you're actually an asset. So if you look at people like Tiger Woods. They have managers behind them. Yes. So the guys, if you, you know, if you want to sponsor Tiger Woods, you speak to the manager, yeah. yes. and then they'll, you know, they'll do all the negotiations, kill a kid, and then, and then you sign on that thing. Then Tiger Woods is available. Yeah. yeah. So we need our players very early to get managers, and there are yes. managers globally, but we need to train them in Kenya as well, so they can begin to manage talent in Kenya, yes. sports talent management, so they can manage, go, you know, rugby players, golfers, you name it, the works. Yeah. So there's a lot that needs to be done in the terms of that overall is that in terms of sport, there is a lot of opportunities for the future. Yeah. Is this must indeed a part of the local participants? Yes, he's playing. Mzee Wakazi Yuko. No, he's my neighbor, Uko Mumias. So okay, yeah. <laughs> I need to he's, he's playing know. this year. Ah, <laughs> yeah, he's playing Greg this year. Snow. Greg Snow is playing. Yeah. Ah. So the the, the 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 usual suspects are all there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good right. stuff. So we look forward to a uh, fantastic event. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming as well. Understand it's also your day, World Engineering Day. 
Where do you tell your comrades? <laughs> I tell my world engineers. Oh, you from your end? <laughs> I've seen the gathering there. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an engineer by profession. That's what I do. But I, I don't practice engineering anymore. I, I'm, a, I'm a retired person. But I think for the engineers, I think one thing you have to do, you do a lot of work during the day, make sure you have good recreation. And one of the recreations that I think is really good for you is golf. Yes. Please play golf. Well, that's where we come to the end of this segment. You've been hosting the tournament director, Patrick Obat of Magical Kenya Open. I'm Robert Osoro, Maxwell Wasike. It is that time when we take a short break with the, what happened last weekend. Manchester United winning, well, 2-0 against the Newcastle to lift their first trophy in six years. Do you support any team in England? Unfortunately, football is one of those things I watch other people watching. <laughs> I like that. That's a part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rugby. Rugby. I used to play. I also. I. But I love watching yeah, you, rugby. You played yeah. for which team? I played for uh, Mombasa. Mombasa. Besides yeah. golf, what other sports do you got some slight admiration for? Um, I was involved in motorsport. Ah. I uh, I used to organize. I was, I was actually a, um one of the assistant clerks for the course for the original ah. safari rally. So I used to look after the coast, the coast area. I was a consistent clerk on the coast for that that side. Yes. So I'm very keen on watching on watching motorsport. Yeah. So I watched not only the World Rally World Rally Championships, but also Formula One. I'm a keen Formula One um, uh, sport. Um, and I, yeah, and I and I go Formula to Formula One. Yeah. Mark Verstappen or Verstappen is my man. Oh, yeah. Lewis. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's yeah. watch Manchester Newcastle. When we come back, it will all be about the fan zone.